It's time for some stargazing as we share our thoughts on Astra from Mind Clash Games, who we have to thank for sending us home a review copy from Origins. So Astra comes from a set of three designers whose names I'm probably about to butcher. I apologize. First is Patrick Porklaw. Next, Frenius Chauverl. Then Esther Christina Sack. Features some very pretty artwork from Chilla Farkita. And it was technically published last year, though we didn't discover this one until Origins Game Fair in 2023. Astra is an area majority point salad for two to five players that plays in 45 minutes to an hour, mainly based on the player count. The age here is listed as 10 plus, though we could see some young players also enjoying it. In Astra, players are astronomers determined to explore and understand the various constellations. Actual gameplay here has players send, spending stardust to mark off stars on constellation cards. The player to mark the final star collects the card and can then use its abilities, but every other player who helped along the way gets a bonus. This game features an interesting mix of give and take and simple rules that hides surprising depth. Get a look at the great artwork, oversized cards, and other components in our Astra unboxing video on YouTube. There you can see the game's smallish and solid box, some very nice oversized cards, dry erase markers, stardust crystals, telescope markers, two-sided player boards, the rule book, and a few other components. Component quality here really is great. Uh, this game features the best dry erase anything I have ever written on and erased. Now, one minor issue I do want to call out for anyone who, who picks this up is when you first get the cards, due to the plastic coating, they tend to stick together. Um, just be aware when sorting out the cards the first game, when I had to pull out a, a, a you know, pull out 25 cards, I think I pulled out 36 the first time. So you might want to try to pull those one at a time instead of sliding through them. Now, the other thing I do want to call out is more on the positive side, and that is this game has a fantastic rule book that is extremely clear and very complete, including a reference paragraph for every single card in the game. Now, setting up Astra is pretty quick. You take the deck of Constellation cards, shuffle it, and then pull off a stack of cards, the number of which is based on the player count. You then put the game end card on top of these, slightly askew, and put the rest of the cards on top of that. You then flip up and discard one card, starting the discard pile. Uh, you place the appropriate main board in the center of the table, this little round board that's basically just to situate everything, and draw and place cards around it from the deck. Now, the board choice and the number of cards is based on the player count. It's technically player count plus one. Then you place the sphere marker, which is this little kind of plastic thing, on the element shown in the card you flipped up. And there's four elements in the game. Each player collects a player board, eight stardust stardust tokens and a marker in the color of their choice they should also each collect a rule summary and scoring card these are asymmetric so players shouldn't show them to the other players and the player who last saw a shooting star starts on a player's turn you have two options you either observe or pass in addition to this before taking either actions you do have the option to activate any constellation cards you previously collected that aren't tapped when a player chooses to observe, they mark off a number of stars on a single constellation card in play, equal to the amount of stardust they are willing to spend. There are very specific rules for what you can fill out, including having to start on a specific spot and not being able to branch your path or double back. When doing this, marking off of constellations and stars, if you fill in a grand star, this is kind of represented by like a, a star burst, you get to mark off one wisdom on your player board. The amount of wisdom you have determines how many cards you can have in your tableau at any point, and it's going to be worth points at the end of the game for how much wisdom you've gained. After any player has done their turn, you check to see if any of the cards now have every star on them filled. In this case, the player who filled in the last star gets to take the card first. But any other players who marked any stars on the card get a bonus. Each card lists four bonuses, and players get a choice of these based on the area majority rules. The player who helped the most gets the first pick, the second most the next, and so on. Note the player taking the card gets to keep the card, so doesn't get any of the bonuses. Once this is resolved, new cards are added to any vacancies that have been created. Now, these card bonuses include all kinds of things like grabbing a bunch of stardust. You can just take points. You might be able to increase the size of your star stardust bag, which gives you more stardust when you rest and is worth points at the end of the game. 
you might be able to untap some of your tapped cards or collect telescope tokens. Telescope tokens can be spent on a player's turn after taking an observe action to take another action. This is the only way you could ever complete a constellation card on your own and is a way you can branch paths or fill in different sections of the same card. Now, the other option instead of observing is to pass. In this case, you collect stardust equal to your stardust pouch size, so up to, so you refill. Then you ready any constellation cards that match the element in the sphere marker is in at that time, and then move the sphere marker clockwise. Now, this may cause you to discard the top card off the top of the deck, which is a timing mechanism in the game. Note, it might be worth passing, even if you already have Stardust, either to fill it up to the to top it off or just to ready some of your cards. Speaking of those cards, every Constellation card you collect has an ability on it and is worth points at the end of the game as long as they are ready. You use these cards at the start of your turn and can use as many as you want to. They do all kinds of things, like letting you draw for free, collecting more Stardust, drawing on more than one Constellation a turn, earning points for filling in Grand Stars, and more. When you use a card, it becomes unready, aka you tap it. Be aware that you can only hold as many cards as your Wisdom level on your player board indicates. If you gain more cards than you can hold, you have to discard down to your Wisdom limit. Uh, play continues until you hit that end of game card that you put a skew in the deck and then you read the instructions on it, which tells you whether everyone gets another turn or if the first player gets to go or whatever. Players then total up their points. Players will have earned some points during the game. To that, they will add their point value of all their ready card, the value of their current Stardust bag size, their current wisdom value, and then points for collecting sets of cards. Now, the scorecard every one player got at the beginning of the game those all four elements and two of these will be already crossed off and they're different for every player. To this, players are going to add in the cards they collected and mark those off and then calculate your score for your sets. I'm not going to get into the full details here, but collecting three or more different elements is worth points, as is collecting two or more cards of the same element with the best possible score being awarded for having four cards of the same element. And whoever has the most points wins. Now, to me, the most shocking thing about Astra is that this game comes from Mind Clash Games. These are the people behind my favorite board game of all time, Anachrony. And oddly, the only thing these two games have in common, except the publisher, is that the names both start with A. Well, Anachrony is a big, meaty game, an epic game experience, both in production quality and gameplay. Astra is a simple-to-learn, fast-playing game that players can learn to play in minutes. That said, though, it's no party game. Games often go longer than half an hour, and the decisions here aren't easy. I'm just shocked by how different a game Mind Clash this is, Astra is, from Mind Clash's other games. The really interesting thing about Astra is the mechanics. The actual thought behind patterns and choices with what options you have and what powers the card give you uh, are very well thought out. And yeah. perhaps that, more than anything, suggests the more meaty origins of the publishers. Yeah, this game just feels very well play tested and developed. It just it feels like everything's there for a reason. and Everything's very well balanced. And I really enjoyed the simplicity and purity of Astra. There's only two options each turn, at least until you've collected a few cards that can give you a couple more options. You basically either draw or pass. The thing is trying to figure out what to draw, where to draw it, and how much to draw is quite tactical and also strategic. Added to this is the decision to collect cards, when to collect them, and which ones to collect. Which sets are you going through? You're going to quickly notice when playing this game that the bonus rewards for players who help can actually be more valuable than the cards itself. But then you can't ignore collecting cards either, because that end game set scoring can cause a huge swing in points at the end of the game. So I'm going to say up front, this game actually isn't for me. Uh, in particular, the theme and how they presented it hit a sour note with me. Now, that being said, I can't deny that the skill and quality of this game is there. The level of thought required of it and that was put into it are impressive. Now, for me, where this game shines is as a public play game. This is a fantastic game to bring out to events for me. This is a game I can set up and have everyone playing in minutes. This is also a game that works just as well at all player counts. It's just as good with two as it is with five. It's a game I can teach the basics of in minutes, 
and it has a theme that's familiar to most people, making it very approachable. Though I gotta say, there are people out there that aren't going to be a fan of the theme, like Sean. Indeed. But more than that, it's how they present it. In particular, astronomers don't explore constellations, nor do they strive to understand them. Now, if admittedly minor details like that don't bother you, and for the majority I expect they won't, this game does have a lot to offer in an easy-to-learn package. Yeah, though actually the theme here is you are some Greek astrologer, so they are striving to understand. I can't remember its name. All the constellations come from an actual historic book. Um, but the thing is, that's not well presented as the theme, which is probably why Sean didn't even know it till now. Well, they, they do state in their description, astronomer, which is yeah. kind of the... Of the people we played it with, my wife and oldest daughter are the ones who love Astra. Um, it was Deanna that convinced me to take home or, well, to ask for a review copy at Origins after we played a short game demo. And if I remember at the time, I kind of said, uh, this one, it, are you sure? Okay, sure, I'll ask. <laughs> she still loves it and often requests I bring it with us when heading out to a public play event she'll be at. For me, I didn't love it as much as her, but I have been enjoying my plays of the game. I have to admit it did get better the more I played. As you start to learn the various different card effects and you can try out different strategies. I definitely enjoyed my last play of Astra more than my first and more than I did at that demo. Now we talk about themes and their importance on this show with some regularity. In this case, for me, it's overpowered the mechanics. But that's not to say it's a bad game. As with all of our reviews, every game is for someone. Who that is depends on many factors. Now, what I've really found interesting, though, is just how different this game plays depending on who you play it with and the strategies they try. This, to me, is actually the most fascinating part about Astra. is isn't the game. It's how people play it. Some players are all about spending every bit of stardust they have every turn and making sure they have drawn their color is everywhere. They want to have as much of their color out on the cards. Other players, though, just want to have that one dot. They want one star on every single constellation. Then other players just want to make sure they're, they're getting bonuses. Other players are all about collecting the cards and using their powers and pulling off these combos where they never have to spend Stardust and get to fill in eight things every turn and take three cards home a turn. I played with players who try to never rest. That's their goal in the game. They sit down like resting seems like a wasted turn. All I'm going to do is take things that give me bonus Stardust so I never have to rest. And then I played with other players who rest all the time. And there are, they'll have a full bag, full pouch, full of Stardust, yet they're still resting because they're hoping to untap their cards. Uh, the best part of all of this is I haven't seen any one of these ways to play come out as any better than any of the others. The sheer volume of cards certainly plays a large part in this range of strategies. And I wouldn't be surprised if the opening set of cards, in combination with your scoring card, which again is unique, wasn't a major factor in how yeah. people played. Uh, even beyond the, their first game, where it's to be expected, that's going to set your tone. Now, overall, Astra ended up being better than I thought it would be. Sure, it was a huge surprise to me when compared to Mind Clash's other games, but it's not strange for a publisher to have a wide mix of games and styles in their collection. It was more how the game grew on me the more I played it and the more depth I discovered each play that was the surprise. Well, I wouldn't turn it down if it was the game being played. It's not one I'd ask to play again. I do hope, yeah. however, that these designers continue working on games. And I'm interested now in checking out one of the other games from uh, Frigius, uh, which is Cerebria, also from Mind Clash. Yeah, it's a meaty one. We're, we're, we're like over four and a half weight on that one, just to show how different it is from Astra. So if you're into stargazing constellations, or maybe you're into zodiac signs, uh, I don't know of many other games with this theme. There are some, but there's not a lot. And it's probably worth checking out Astra just for that region. With its easy to learn mechanics and constantly engaging gameplay, it's probably going to be a hit as a game as well. Similarly, if you know someone who's into these things, this could be a great gift. The rules here are approachable enough that I think even non-hobby gamers should be able to pick it up pretty easily. Especially if you have someone who's experienced that can give them a teach. With someone who knows the game teaching you this, you really are playing in minutes. There aren't many games of this weight I'd consider as gifts to a non-hobby gamer. But really, as this might be one of them, because while tricky, it's still very approachable. Now, even if the theme does nothing for you, for people like Sean, I suggest seeing if there's a way you can try this game out. There's more going on here than just coloring stars. The actual area majority and reward mechanics are really solid. 
and the set collection storing is extremely tight um, to the point of almost being brutal. Indeed, this is not a coloring book game that just happens to be what they chose rather than chits or cubes, and it certainly makes the game easier to pack up as a result. Now, what you're not going to find here is your epic game night filled with back and forth where you're building an engine and making it bigger and better every turn, and you're giving yourselves more options and more things to do. You're not going to fight over who gets to do what, and you're not trying to save the world. For that kind of experience, check out Mind Clash's other games like Anachrony, Tricurion, or Perseverance. There you have our thoughts on Astra. A good example to me of just how much theme can matter in a game. Well, what's a game that feels like you should enjoy it, but the theme actually turns you off? Tell us about it in the comments below. Now, one final thing before we wrap up this review, and that is to remind you that if you found this helpful and if you enjoy our content we put out, it would be awesome of you to consider tipping your bellhop over at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Thank you.